gentlemen, it's Nancy Children. Ooh, I got cold chills when you said it that way. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I am super duper dippity. My air conditioning is out in my house. <laughs> it happens to be cooler today than it has been. And so it's not nearly as sauna-like as it is in the afternoon sometimes. So <laughs> good luck with that, because that is terrible, terrible in yeah. the south. Luckily, I have a second building where it's very cold over there. I keep it nice and cold. Uh, but this is my recording studio over here with all the lights and all the every setup. And so I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh, buttercup. But guys, this right here, Nancy Tildress, I love this lady to death. If you have not followed her Facebook group, that's where I think you're most active. You can do a lot of videos and all that. Keto for real life people is the name of her group. I was bragging about your group before you came here about how like that's everything. Like to me, being real with people and what we're going to do here today with the topic today on keto and during menopause is a very real, let's keep it real topic. Because look, yep. things aren't always as great as people make them out to be online about keto and especially for women in menopause. So let's back up a little bit before we dive right into the jugular here. Tell okay. us a little bit about yourself for people that don't know who you are. Okay. So, you know, um, I'm just real life people, you know, housewife, mom, grandma, um, always struggled with my weight, always uh, tried to eat whichever way I could, whatever plan was the latest trend. And it wasn't until I tried keto and I gave it a serious start. I tried it once like in 2016 for um, a 90 day trial period. Pardon me, but my glasses are fuzzy. Um, and then, and I lost some weight and it was great, but I immediately went off plan because it was just a challenge. And it wasn't until 2018 that I got serious about it and went back to it. And I thought for the first time, I felt like keto was like the holy grail way of eating. Keto set me free from food addiction, uh, killed my cravings for constant carbs, constant sugars and junk. And in the process, I dropped like 74, 75 pounds. Yes. And the whole thing, because it's a long story and a lot of you who, who follow me know all that, right? You can find my in detail story in my Facebook group, <laughs> but um, loved it. And I love creating recipes and I, I love figuring out how to make keto sustainable through like just your normal everyday things that you would want to eat with your whole yeah. family, not just for yourself. Right. So um, I've, I've tracked along that route, uh, doing YouTube videos, tutorials on showing people how to, to, to cook. But then on the other side of that, you know, there's everyday real life struggles. There's the day in and the day out of it and um, issues that come up that you just, you know, might not be prepared for. So I've spent all my time just trying to encourage people, uh, mostly women in my group, uh, to motivate them, to stay the course, to, to let them know that it works. And that's been my mission. Well, and that's the mission you tell yourself as well, because I know mm -hmm. you struggled with a lot of it. And, you know, this is all from menopause a little bit. Let's just face it. When you put yourself out there as a keto advocate, <laughs> <laughs> quote, don't look the part, you're going to get the judgy judge. And I know you get some of that yourself. A lot of us do. And and what's mm -hmm. fun, not just the people that have extra weight, it's the people that are underway oh you're anorexic oh you're promoting eating disorder and so it's like you almost are you doing drugs what? <laughs> no like that's one of the things they'll do if you if you've been heavy your whole life and then you really start working on yourself and you are you know dropping that weight and feeling good because keto let's face it is kind of a, a quick weight loss in the beginning people will literally come up are you doing drugs like oh. no no i'm not oh i have Tell me, Nancy, they thought I had cancer because I oh. dropped weight so fast. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, you're, you're darn, darned if you do, darned if you don't. Which is amazing to me because they're ambivalent towards people that eat crappy garbage. Yes. And yeah. we don't say anything to people unless they get like morbidly so, but we don't tell anybody that's gaining weight unless it's like a snide comment, but usually it has to be like significant weight gain before mm -hmm. you get like that. Most of the time, we're just like, well, I guess they let themselves go. 
oh, they're just putting on the weight again, you know, it's just, there it is. Yeah, it's, it, like I said, you're, you're darned if you do, you're darned if you don't, you know. Now, of course, my family that's closest to me, they, you know, they know the ins and the outs. They've seen me struggle my whole life with, yes. with these issues. So it's not so much them, but, you know, yeah. it, it can mess with your head. Well, and it messes with you women because when you reach a certain age, a certain time in your cycle of life, uh, things start to, to shift. And w this is what's funny. Oh, what age were you, by the way, when you started keto? You said 2018 when you got really serious. How yeah, so I want to say that I was going on 52. I was 51. So you were so all... No, I had to have been 52 going on 53, yes. So you were already <laughs> post-menopausal by the time... No. No, no, no. I'm a late bloomer. Okay. Hey, good for you. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, well, this is good because what you're demonstrating is, look, I had certain amounts of success with keto while still in kind of pre-menopause. And then once menopause hit, whammo, bammo, that didn't work anymore. And hey. challenges. I okay, so let me pause right there because here's the thing. We, we all know that when we're in our 40s, we're already in perimenopausal. It does, it, we're perimenopausal. It can start as early as like 30, in your late 30s, you start. It's mild and it's it's so uh, mild that as the years go by, because it can take years and years, right. because your body has this natural, you know, you, you it declines. You start, your estrogen lowers, everything starts dropping, but slowly, so slowly that you don't, you just live with it and it's just part of your life. You don't even think about it until yeah. maybe, you might start getting a night sweat here or there. You might start feeling a little bit of vaginal dryness every now and then. You might be a little bit moodier than you normally are, and your husband hates it. But you're just thinking, ah, oh, that's just part of it. It's not it. Because women really, the women that I've dealt with, the women that I talk to on a daily basis, are not aware of the signs and symptoms of menopause. You, you you know the big ones, right? You know there's the, your period stops. All right, so you know that you might gain a little bit of weight. Yes. You know that uh, you might have the night sweats and the hot flashes. You know, these are the common symptoms of menopause. And everyone tells you it's not that bad. Your period's gonna stop. You might get a little moody. You might gain a little weight, but then life goes on. And this is not just like, housewife to housewife, woman to woman, this is the consensus everywhere you go. Yeah. Try to talk to a, a male doctor about it, which I did, by the way. Uh, none of that's related to menopause. I mean, he's a real, pardon me, douche, but I had to switch doctors. Like, you're, none of this is related, you know? Wow. But in reality, there are more than 40, upwards of 60 symptoms of menopause that, that women don't know about. <laughs> But things like, like um, things like tingling hands and tingling feet. Well, it could be it could be this. It, well, that's part of it. It can be electric shock feeling going through your body. It could be complete like body dysmorphia, yeah. headaches, fatigue, chronic fatigue, depression. Um, I don't have the entire list in front of me, no. but, but let me say, because there, these, these symptoms are so like crossover, uh, obviously lower libido, all of a sudden, don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me, <laughs> you know? And you think that, oh, all right, but until that period stops, you don't know. And try, Google me this, okay? Look up menopause. What is menopause? You would be surprised how many answers you get it is the the one year period when you've gone one year without a period you're in menopause well what is the year that you're not having the period it's it's you're getting ready to go to menopause mm. if you but, but when you did that what is it afterwards it's post menopause so when does the menopause part come in so there is just not enough information. I know there's some good doctors. I love Dr. Annika Becca. Uh, yeah. She is just, you know, she's so sweet. Yeah. Uh, uh, Miss Peltz, uh, she's, got, she's got some good stuff. Me, me but too. overall, there's still a lack of understanding. And here's my, my biggest thing. I wish that someone had told me that when you start menopause, stay the course, don't freak out. It's not going to just go away in a year. It's not like you're going to, your period's going to stop and then you're going to go back to feeling like yourself. 
Yes. You literally, for, for some of us, for a majority of us, we never feel like the same person again. Well, and you're not. I mean, think about it when you're menstruating, that's a totally different person than when you stop. And so that it makes sense that you would not be the same. And that's the indication of the hormonal shift uh, that takes over. By the way, Marcy's given us more symptoms, burning tongue, out of body experience, and a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde mood swing. <laughs> Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, I resisted hormone replacement therapy be just because uh, of horror stories. You don't want increased risk of, of you know, cancer, uh, blood clots. I mean, when you look when you look at any of the pharmaceutical stuff out there, you know, you wonder, is it worth taking the medication when you right. have to deal with all the side effects? They, they do have some more natural bioidentical types of ones that would match your natural uh, hormones if you were in a menstruating uh, cycle, so to speak. And so that does help with some of the hot flashes for the ladies that can't get the estrogen but, down. But most of the time, your insurance won't cover it. No, it's I'm not. It's out of pocket, and it's not cheap. So, yeah, I'm again, not. Yeah, I'm not saying that it's cheap or that it's easy. I'm just saying there are options for the people that can get it. And I know a lot mm -hmm. of uh, naturopaths actually try to work with insurance companies to to make that and functional medicine doctors same thing now I will say this um, now it, I've, I've taken a pause so you caught me I, I, I pulled the page from the Jimmy Moore playbook and I was like I'm going on sabbatical I've been doing this you know for three years but with menopause and and personal circumstances in my life uh, but mainly because of menopause my depression I have suffered from depression for the last almost two years come this fall, yes. uh, December, November. And um, it, everything just became too much. So I took a huge pause. Um, it, like I said, menopause will mess with your mind. When you're dealing with all of the, the, the bombardment of your hormones going crazy, basically it's like um, playing a video game. And you've got, you know, your life circle. You've got so much energy and you're in the fight and you're in the fight, but it's just going loud, down, 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 down. And boom, you bottom out, you yeah. know. And, and you've got nothing left. Well, that's kind of the way I was feeling because my weight just started coming back on. And, and here's... Here's the thing, because it's not all doom and gloom. I have hope. I'm not happy. I have gained almost every bit of my weight back that I lost wow. over this last year. Uh, and I was staying keto. I was eating keto. And when the pandemic came along, I was like, meh, you know, off and on plan. And, oh, that's a terrible thing to do, you know, because it comes quicker. But it doesn't stop either way. I have, I have done everything I can. So I hit the books again. I started researching. I'm like, well, why, is not, why isn't keto working? And what I've got rolling around in my head is this. I think uh, especially like taking surveys and, and going and finding all these women who are in the same predicament. So for a, I'm going to just kind of zoom in on the perimenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal woman. If you have been on keto, it doesn't matter how long. I've, I've known women who've been on it four, five, ten years and hit the place where I'm at right now. And they cannot understand why is keto not working anymore? Why am I gaining weight now doing the same thing? Um, it's because you need to shift gears. Keto is a wonderful tool, but what I'm reading and what I'm learning is that once you hit a certain place in your menopause, your, your nutritional needs change. Yes. And you're going to need higher protein and lower fat, and you still want to keep your you know, you know, carbs yeah. low to moderate. Hey, puppies, stop it. Bad puppy. Bad puppy. New puppy. Rescue puppy. He, we should have named him Leroy. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, what I'm saying is I'm thinking that uh, we need to step, step back because it, we, I scoured. I scoured for all kinds of advice, and every little I took every bit. I bought the books. I watched the videos. I tried eating this way. I tried eating that way, and actually nothing worked. It's almost like it's an idea here. Try it. Let me, let me do this for you. Yeah. But what you really do need to do is look at – the type of meat you're eating, and your macros are going to change. And I think it, it should be part of a phase of keto. Yes. Well, and listen, 
I think sometimes ladies, and I'm not a lady, so I'm not speaking for you, but I've talked to a lot of experts on this show over the years of, that I do. And it just seems to me ladies stay in the same mindset that when they're menstruating, that when postmenopausal and into full on menopause, they think they can eat that same way and, it, and that they're the same person. You're not the same person hormonally speaking. And so mm -hmm. it makes no sense. And thank you, by the way, for accentuating that. All right, ladies that are in menopause, you got to bump up the protein, maybe slightly come down in the fat, keep your carbs low. Low carb, then more than ever is when you need to do it. So you protect your brain health, you protect your heart health, all the things that are killing women in their, in their older age. It's yeah, because the minute you start menopause, you are at a 50% risk for higher risk for cancer, stroke, yes. menop uh, heart attack, all of yes. those things. So, yes. And they're tied, by the way, the, to the insulin resistance. And the best insulin resistance diet is this higher protein, lower fat keto for uh, postmenopausal women. And so thank you, by the way, for articulating this. And maybe this is resonating with some people. I see a lot of your fans down in the comments. Mm -hmm. there chiming in saying we're proud of you for taking time away and kind of like helping us through this, this time because we're doing the same thing you are. So this is why I wanted to have you on my show today is I do feel like this is something nobody talks about. I don't know hardly it, anything. It does not get the attention it should. And like I said, there are, well, look, if you, I don't know how many young keto people out there. I know there's a bunch. But in my past experience, in the last few years, it's like there's this demographic of women, and it's a huge number, who are somewhere maybe even in their mid to late 30s, you know, this huge number, and they're coming into it. If nothing else, this is my, now my heart says, look, I want you to know what's coming your way. Whether maybe you're in your mid 40s, maybe you're just getting ready to jump off the precipice and start into the serious part of your menopause journey. Uh, maybe your periods haven't stopped, but you're right there because living it <laughs> uh, allows me to turn around and tell you that pay attention closely to what you're doing. If you're eating, men if you're eating. Uh, keto, and all of a sudden, you know, you're, 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 you're creeping up a pound here, maybe, and maybe a pound there, but you are being good, because everybody wants to say that, oh, look at your creepy, you know, your creepy carbs and your sneaky sugars, it has to be something you're doing, not necessarily. Well, and let, let me accentuate something as well, because you say keto, quote, stopped working, and generally that's code for the weight loss stopped, but that doesn't mean it's not still modulating a lot of the endocrine system, keeping your insulin low, your inflammation low, and da-da-da-da-da. And I think sometimes we so hyper-focus on a scale weight that we forget all those other markers that are being helped. And those of you that are postmenopausal, you're actually a slight form, if not a full-on form, of insulin resistance. And when you're insulin resistant and stress hits, like, gee, I don't know, this stupid thing that hit us a year and a half ago, along with maybe anything maybe happening in your life that might be a stressor, that hits you harder. And so when people write to me, and they do, like they do you all the time, why am I getting weight? I can't get this weight off that I gained in the last year and a half. I'm like, gee, I wonder, did something happen the last year and a half? Hmm. So like, give yourself a lot of grace that you're at a point in your life, if you're in menopause, that it's just going to be harder with the weight. But you're focus is let me make amazing health markers that I can be proud of. And then if I <clears throat> line, my body will be right where it needs to be in its weight. I will tell you too, here's an interesting thing that happened. Um, and you do have, I, I say, stay the course, keep it keto, keep it low carb, pay attention to what's going on to your body. Another thing that can happen if you didn't have insulin resistance, yeah, might now. Yeah. It's not something that you had because prior to this, and I know I keep going back to the weight thing, but it's, it's, it's also a way to tell what's going on with your body. See, right. I was beautifully happy with my weight loss. I could have lost another 20, 30 pounds to be down at the perfect number, but overall it was the happiest I've ever been in my life with my body and where I was at. So to start gaining weight and you, you get this mind trip, you know, this, I'm like, I almost said a bad word. Okay. So, you have fuck. to pay attention. I do. You can say mind fuck on my show if you want to. <laughs> okay. 
keep it real, Day. Uh, you got, I got keto. I know. I keep it so real, but yes. here we go. So real. Keto Chow is a customizable shake mix that is also perfect for cooking and baking, giving you simple, nutritionally perfect meal options. Keto Chow. Make keto easy. Discover your favorite flavor at jimmylovesketochow.com. But insulin resistance was not a huge issue for me because I could just, my weight was dropping, I was doing good, my markers were beautiful, everything was looking great, menopause came along, guess what? My blood sugar started spiking, never had an issue with blood sugar in my entire life. Yeah. Now all of a sudden I'm getting 135, 145, 150, and I'm like, what the hell? Now was it the morning sugar? Yes. <laughs> called me and you're like what the hell Jimmy <laughs> yeah what the hell Jimmy and and what happened was it balanced out during the day so that yeah. kind of you kind of helped me out and explain that to me yeah. I thought that was great the other thing though my cholesterol and my triglycerides my markers started going wonky when I did my labs so you just have to know what's going on um, and 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 please don't do, if you are a carb addict, sugar addict, food addict, whatever it is, uh, don't do what I did. I'm, I'm like the walking poster child for don't do what I did, y'all. Don't become so frustrated uh, and freaked out and depressed that you say, fuck it. There we go. I let that word out and I'll just eat whatever because it doesn't make a difference anyway. But it really does because you're only compounding problems that that right. you're gonna make you're gonna have worse markers. Your health is going to decline more rapidly. Your well, blood sugar is going to go out of control. Like your brain can trick you into beliefs that aren't true, and very quickly. That's the problem. Is sometimes we just get in our own heads and say, well, "I want that thing." Mar no. Husband's gonna grab him. Thank you. <laughs> When you're talking, I, I can't hear myself talk. Okay. Uh, so I said, when uh, when we get in our own heads, sometimes we just, we talk ourselves into things that aren't true. And so we need to make sure that what we're thinking of, well, I want that thing. So therefore, that's my body telling me I need it for some reason. Yeah, that's bullshit. Don't do that, guys. Um, I, and I, I do think the body is smart and it does give us clues. But in that case, I think it just leads you down this slippery slope path. I want to mention one thing, by the way, about the weight, because I've talked to a lot of experts about this and they're like, you should be lucky. It was Amy Berger that actually put I this. I love Amy. Amy Berger is amazing. So yes. to it nutrition, look her up, guys. So she said, if you have weight on your body, be lucky because that is protecting you from the manifestation of disease forming. As long as you're still dealing with weight on the body and it's still visibly kind of there and growing, you know, with, with nothing you're doing making that happen, that means your body is desperately trying to save you from some disease state going on that it, it's holding back the inflammation. So, to speak. so look at it and imagine it like firefighters kind of pushing back on fire that's trying to mm -hmm. control a house it's trying to consume you and that fat is a layer of protection and we don't like to look at it that way we only have a negative view of oh it's grotesque look, yeah, look at exactly. the bubbles. but it's actually there to protect you and if you start looking at it in that way you don't see it as a negative it doesn't mean you want it to stay there it does mean you want to put that fire out which is why i say put the focus on the health markers and then maybe all those firefighters trying to hold back all that fire of inflammation off of your body can take a rest and and then it will be able to come off yes and and your while your body is doing all of that while it's trying to work itself out in the process you might actually and this is just encouragement you might still be gaining a few pounds some women yeah. you know some women are just freaking out because you know they've gone through this and they i think they're blessed why because maybe they've gained 10 12 maybe 15 pounds yes. and and they're just freaked out because they can't take it back off and it's just you know with women we tend to just really like focus in and zoom in on why and i want it now i want it now it's our baruka moment um but really you should just be thankful for for what it is it like you said it is your body is doing what it's trying to do it's trying to adjust to the changes that are coming your way and there's hope on the other side now you know my mom has always been heavy i mean much heavier than myself and um she 
forced menopause. I mean, she was going through it at this at, at the same time she was going through menopause. She had to have a hysterectomy, so it kind of all did it at once. And she was in her fifties. Um, she did put on more weight, quite a bit more. She broke the three hundred barrier. I'm, I'm she doesn't have Instagram, so I'm sure she won't mind me telling this. But here's my hope, guys. She's now 70 years old, and she just finally got fed up and said, Babe, I need the help. Yes. So while I'm over here just punching it up, my mom's dropping 20 pounds. Yes. Oh, my dog just hit my lighting. <laughs> but my mom's dropping 20 pounds. And how many other women out there who have finally kind of balanced out in menopause. Well, you will finally find that. It might be a lower level of estrogen and progesterone and all those other testosterone levels, but you will finally balance out. Yeah. And you will able to come back to it. But it, again, menopause doesn't just take one year. It's not, it doesn't end when your period stops for a year. Yes. Some women say, I've been going through this for 10 years. <laughs> Some said, I breezed right through it without a problem whatsoever, you know? So, but at some point, everybody kind of seems to balance back out. And then if, if weight is still an issue, tackle it. So work on keeping your, your eating habits healthy. Right. Work on keeping your labs beautiful. Right. Well, some, some kind of like telltale signs to keep track of, besides the health markers, wonderful things to look at. Ins fasting insulin levels, blood sugar levels, if you're keto, ketone levels would be nice. They're going to tend to be lower um, at times, and that's okay, especially if you've done this a while, you're going to be keto adapted. But inflammation markers, I mean, we could go down the list of all these kind of markers, but I want to, I want to pay attention, have people pay attention to some subjective ones as well. Mood and brain health is such a marker that if you're eating well, you're going to be pretty chill. You know, during the transition, you had those kind of moody, cranky things. Well, now, once you've got the hormones balanced and you're in that menopause full on, you know, your brain should kind of calm down at that point, but it's not going to get degenerative. That's what, that, this is where the carbohydrate restriction comes in handy because it's going to keep the brain solvent. And like, I'm about to turn 50. I'm not menopause because I'm not a, guy, a girl, but, yeah. but I've got, full faculties about me and women can be the same way like it's because of the nutrition that does that and it's not an inevitability you're going to go into alzheimer's disease which we see so many uh people go into nursing homes because dementia and alzheimer's and then speaking they're of which mr jimmy i hate to interrupt but you know one of the things that i am looking into are exogenous ketones yes. for your mood and, and stability and focus because brain fog is such a huge issue yes and your memory is affected like i've always had a, a very sharp memory a very you know my husband hates it because i remember every little detail for years uh but again you come along into that spot where now memory you got this brain fog and you know you're not quite remember what's that person's name and i'm like oh my god I just <laughs> but well, i do believe that exogenous ketones can be a yeah. tool one of the tools that you're going to need a nice big toolbox for this journey. And I think that, you know, but like you said, with the fasting, the blood, and you do some intermittent fasting, you keep, you keep on track. You do lower those fats. You do raise those proteins. You might incorporate uh, some exogenous ketones for brain health. I don't say for weight loss because you all know I don't promote them for that, but use the tools. And I wanted to, <sighs> If you need help with depression, figure it out quickly. I allowed myself, I'm so terrified of medication. I'm so terrified of antidepressants. Not that I haven't been on them. I did 20 years ago, I did a round of it for like nine months. Uh, but my terror was that my mother, when she went through menopause, went on uh, antidepressants to this day she cannot get off of them and if she does she goes down to a deep dark 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 suicidal place uh, maybe that's my own little head trip that I've got to deal with because the thought of of not being me uh, anymore just terrifies me so hormone replacement therapy if it if, if, if it didn't do anything it's I'm not happy happy goat joy joy but at least I'm not laying in my bed now like I did for like four or five months just solid just laid in there 
you know. Uh, I, I really want to say thank you to you real quick, just because I loved your, your post yesterday, like the head games that you were talking about. Don't believe that crap. Yeah. You know, just don't. Um, during this time of your life, don't believe the crap that's coming in. Because when you're going through menopause, the mind fuck is hard. Yeah. It's hard to deal with. Um, it's We can sit here and be happy and talk about, about helpful things you can do. But also <clears throat> know that you have a, a support community. You know, uh, Jimmy is not a chick, but Jimmy is one of the most compassionate people I know. And I just, uh, you know, this topic is, I think, just so important for a vast majority of women who are like the forgotten women, you know, like nobody talks about us. Nobody says, here's your solution. And maybe it's just because they don't have the answers that it doesn't get talked about. Well, and that's why I wanted you on today, because I knew you were going to keep it real, because that's who you are. And that's what I love about you. That's why we've been friends for many years in this community is I've always appreciated your authenticity and your reality and and yeah i have a heart for people so thank you for that um and i try to show that in all my work but yeah my mom Aurene, by the way she's long gone now 13 14 years but she used to kind of have these old stories oh yeah you know charlie and went down and met sally and then and i'm just like no i don't know who any of these people are but apparently you remember them ma'am also <laughs> <laughs> Ask her like a simple question of remembering, and I don't remember that, but she's got all these stories in her head. It's amazing. Oh, yes. The brain and works to compartmentalize things. It does, and it's, it's really, really strange, the things that, you know, and I I hate to say it, but, you know, with age comes certain uh, uh, light bulb moments, aha moments, you know. Now yes. Oh, I lost your sound. Did I lose my sound? All right, it's back now. Go. Oh, good. Um, so you do, you start understanding your, your elders a little bit better once you hit the spot. <laughs> You're like, oh, I get it. Well, and it makes you appreciate when you've made some lifestyle changes like nutrition. You know, I'm going to give a plug for grounding and sunshine exposure and red light therapy and ice baths and infrared saunas and all these little biohacking that's not just for the young folk if you're in menopause or you're getting older those are things that will enhance all of these things we're talking about here um with with menopausal women it, it's good for people of any age to help control blood sugar and inflammation and all the things just going outside and laying on the on the lounger and just soaking up the sun uh, is going to help with your mood. I mean, again, you're dealing with vitamin D deficiencies now that maybe you didn't have before, so you need that sunshine. Of course, getting out there and walking. It's I'm going to say this. It's all easier said than done. There are days that I want to get out there and walk, and when I do it, I feel better for it. I might not lose a pound, but, hey, I feel better overall, mind, spirit, body, uh, grounding, getting my feet out there in that grass. That feels wonderful. Um, you got to do it, though. So here's how you get in the walk. You pop any more podcasts. Most of them are about 45 to 60 minutes, and you got your walk in. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Hey, good plug there. I love it. But it's true. You can learn while you're going along. Yes. Me personally, I like a little power music, but do whatever it takes. If you love to listen to your podcast, you can double down. You can get your podcasts in, your yeah. audio books, your music, and just get out there. Um, so, so Nancy likes, pump up the jam, pump it up while your feet are stopping. Mm. <laughs> hey, I have been known to be walking around the lake, and I am literally dancing while I'm doing it. <laughs> Cause it's all about that bass, that bass, that bass. And I would dance with you, Nancy, so. <laughs> <laughs> or at least bob my head. Hey, if you can keep the beat, you know, you're good. <laughs> I, I can make the beat. Ooch, 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 I was thinking, well, what, what, what is it? Love <laughs> that, that thing. <laughs> all right, I've gone too far. <laughs> See, guys, now you know how good of friends we are. We, yeah. we put our bob head together. We can do the bob head dance together. <laughs> so, let's talk about some of the ways that it's manifested now that you're in menopause. Um, I'm assuming you eat less calories now than you did pre-menopause. 
Good. I'm glad you brought that up because it kept coming to my mind and I'm going like, to circle back to that point, circle back to that point in my head. Okay. So that's your natural assumption. Women seem to think, and it's just our nature that, uh, when, when going through something like this, we automatically start cutting. Golly, I don't know how many post messages I've cut out heavy whipping cream. I've cut my fat back. I've cut out cheese. I've cut out dairy. I've cut out all almond flour. I've cut out, cut out, cut out. I have lowered my calories. I have lowered my calories. Well, what you're doing is running your metabolism into the ground. Yes. Yes. You're running it in. And um, I did the same exact thing. I was like, I'm taking it down to 800. I don't care. I'm short. I'm only 5'2". My body can handle the lower calories. And and, and some of, of my people, people, you know, started freaking out like Nancy. <laughs> well, <Get a> grip. <laughs> make the argument for why people do that, just so people hear it. People hear, well, there's fat on the body and that's calories. So if I only eat 800 calories, but my body lets go of 600 calories worth of fat, therefore I had 1400 calories. So that's how we convince mm -hmm. ourselves. And then when you're in menopause, your, me your metabolism is slowing down. It is grinding down. It is coming to a freaking halt. And you're thinking in order to uh, let my me my metabolism do any kind of work. I have to lower my calories, and then my I can still continue to work on my weight loss, or maybe stop gaining weight, or something like that. But in reality, it, in order to f make your metabolism work, you need to fuel it. Well, and that's what I was going to say. That if you're going to eat 800 calories one day, 800 calories the next day, and just do that every day, why don't you eat 1,600 calories in one day? then fast the next day, and then eat 1,600 calories the next day. It's the exact same calories over that period of time. Uh -huh. The metabolic effects of eating nothing compared to eating only 800, your body, you're starving and goes into all kind of shutdown processes at 800. Zero is actually a highly amazing uh, metabolic state for you because it turns on autophagy, it turns on growth hormone, it turns on all these wonderful things. If we could just get people to say, all right, if I'm going to eat, make sure you eat enough. But if I'm not going to eat, let me eat zero and go about my life. And don't sweat the small stuff here. Don't freak out with this because I think you're, this is, this is into the next phase. And I'm going to be quite honest. I haven't gotten to this part. I did the fasting. I mean, I was running my life app. I was doing my fasting. Um, cause I do, but I didn't, it, and I still didn't get any results except for the fact that I felt better guys. There's always the feel better. That is a result. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. You got results, just not in the weight, which was your goal. Exactly. Exactly. So if you, we can just say, hey, let's set the weight loss totally aside. And I know that's hard because we're women. That is yeah. like our number one. Like, it really is. We don't yeah. care about our, I mean, we care, but we don't care when it comes to this. We want to be skinny and fit. It's yeah. just part of our nature. But here's the thing. If you are implementing fasting, maybe that alternate day fasting. Now, I haven't personally uh, looked at Maria, Maria Emmerich's thing, but I hear she's doing this this uh, high protein. Pro uh, bearing modified fast. Is what yes, called. yes. And I have some women who are reaching out to me saying this is working with them. They are feeling better. So there's the, the, the balancing of the moods. There's actually a little bit of weight loss, maybe some inflammation and stuff that's built up, whatever. But they're having some results. Um, another one is uh, just eat, eating high, high enough protein. Say uh, you look at a, a healthy weight for yourself. Me personally, 150, 160. And I'm only 5'2". I don't need to weigh 120 or 130 pounds. But I, I, but I would fall somewhere in the, I need somewhere between 140 to 170 grams of protein a day. And it's hard to it's hard for me to wrap my mind around. It's hard to figure that out. But in true keto for real life people nature, I'm, I'm already trying to think about, okay, I'm not a carnivore. I can't just sit there and eat that. But I can figure out how to do high protein smoothies. Of course, there's things like hero chow available where you can do a protein shake. Yeah. Uh, you can modify, uh, you, you can break it up throughout the day through, through different various forms. It doesn't have to be like all meat all day long. On, you know, um, hell, I'm even looking at some Mediterranean incorporation of just really, you know, ramping up those, those, what fats I have, I want to make count. Yes. 
Real Good Foods is one of the fastest growing frozen food companies in the U.S. Everything they make is nutrient dense, high in protein, low in carbs, and made from real food ingredients. Instead of using processed flours, everything they make is 100% grain free and gluten free, which is how they keep their carbs so low. They can be found at Costco, Walmart, Target, Kroger, and in almost every grocery store nationwide. Or you can order online. Check us out today at realgoodfoods.com and at Real Good Foods on social media. That's the purpose of the fat anyway. Everybody's saying, oh, keto is very high fat. And it is as a percentage of the total amount of calories that you're consuming. But I think fat has been so focused on that we forget it's just merely to be used to make sure you don't get hungry. The protein is the star of the show. And then the natural fats that come with that protein and then minimal carbohydrates because there's no nutritional human nutritional need for carbohydrate. And so when you do that, your body runs efficiently and some and but we have this notion we have to add fat, add fat, add fat. And, and hey, I, I, I was the I probably the number one preacher of that, that mantra, right. Pick fat and figure out what you want to eat with it. Well, and I, <laughs> I think we were so fat phobic for so long, Nancy, that I think people still made that the knee jerk reaction of well, we know low fat's good. So let's keep carbs low and eat chicken breast. And it's like, okay, that was the wrong message. But telling people have the proteins, but then the natural fats that come with that protein was the right message we've been missing all along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're going to get a, a, a nice a bit. And let's not forget, guys, um, again, I'm not, I don't have the science to back it up. And I always use myself as that human guinea pig. But, you know, um, I'm, I am leaning more to fattier fishes. Uh, cod, sardine, salmon, obviously, uh, incorporating avocado and olive oil more into my life. Like I said, I'm looking kind of at a, a more of a Mediterranean approach only because we're looking at things that, you know, osteoporosis is another thing that women are going to be dealing with. You're, gonna, you're wanting to keep those calciums and those things up there. I'm not against red meat. I'm just saying I have not felt good since this whole thing started. And I was dominant red meat, uh, high fatty cuts. Now I'm looking at fattier fishes and things like that. I still want to get my, like I said, various ways to get protein in that uh, are sustainable. Right. Well, that's in line with what you were talking about earlier. You're a different Nancy Childress than you were pre-menopause. And mm -hmm. so it stands to reason that post-menopause and full-on menopausal Nancy Childress is going to be a different nutritional need person as well. And I love it. Like, I, I personally don't like a lot of fish. It's just never been appealing to me. I'm a red meat guy. I could eat red meat till the cows come home, literally. <laughs> but, um, but like, there could come a point where maybe that doesn't happen anymore. And I want more fish. I don't see that day coming. But uh, <laughs> woman maybe it would be a little more propensity for that although to to be fair to the carnivore women that are older there's some women out there love their red meat so yes yes thematic oh and i love it too i do i just find that you know again my needs are changing you know when i first started my keto journey i i i've often questioned god i'm like why am i going through this and why me <laughs> And part of me feels like, you know, if you hadn't gone through this, how could you have helped other people in this yeah. area? Yeah. You know, um, because I was so gung ho and, and, you know, you met me all hyper Nancy at the conferences and stuff. Uh, and I had no clue. I was just like any other person out there trying to help women who would message me who were so desperate, like I'm doing everything and I can't lose weight and I'm doing everything and my mood hasn't changed. I don't feel better. I'm not getting any results like other keto people are getting. And why? Because they were in a stage of their life where it wasn't happening. Right. And I didn't know that until I experienced that. Right. So I'm well very thankful in that respect because now I have a huge window of empathy and sympathy for women who are going through this but they don't understand what it is they've let that dog in the house again so I 
want to say, when I started doing this, I would tell people, look, give keto your best three weeks. Marley. Um, and keto comes in phases and stages. And I would, I would explain how, you know, what it's like to be the first couple of weeks of keto, what it's like to be keto for, for a month, what it's like to be fat adapted months later, what it's like to be coming into the place where you start hitting the stalls and how you start to have to auto tuning stuff. But now, now I can say, okay, so now you've done keto X amount of time, you've hit that. How many women, including nurse, nurse Cindy, hit that wall? They hit that wall. It's going to be a year. It's going to be two years. When, warrior Keto Wendy, same thing. Two years, you know, and eliminating food like crazy. And now I can say, pause. Yes. Don't worry about it. It's just another phase, just like any other phase that you're going to go through. And here's what you're going to do. Now we're going to start working on a plan. If this is you, if you're doing the menopause thing, here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to understand. And I think uh, that's got to be the message out there, you know, how to go about this and not lose your ever-loving mind, not gain <laughs> back every single bit of weight you maybe, you know, have worked so hard to lose. Yeah. Can I tell you what goes into this as well, if everything you were describing, and thank you, that was eloquently put. I think part of it, though, is that pressure when things aren't working anymore, adds stress to the body. And I, my theory is it's that stress that makes it harder, that if you took your approach to your thing now of, hey, just chill, kind of roll with it, it's just the way it's gonna be for maybe a year to maybe longer. Like you've gotta kind of ride the wave of this until you're into menopause, then you can make the shift. I love this message, because it's a message of hope. Mm -hmm. and not one of fear. And I think a lot of women, they live in fear and that fear manifests into stress and that stress manifests into weight gain and health complications. And they're like, oh my God, what's happening to me? Yes, and nobody was there. Nobody had the answers. And I still don't have the answers, but I have a better understanding now of uh, what's going on. And I'm not freaking out as much. Am I happy go lucky all the time? Yeah. But I have a better understanding of what's going on. I purchase I remember watching Nurse Cindy, uh, one of her lives, and you know, uh, when I met her, she was a bit heavier than she is now. Yeah. You know, she she just laid it right out there. Hey, and she was like two years. Um until her body balanced out. It's not the weight loss that she experienced. Stop it. This Go lay down. It gone. wasn't the weight loss. He's a this big puppy. Onto the dogs. <laughs> it has gone to the dogs, especially that one. Keep going. Um, or Cindy. She, it's not about the weight loss. It was about the fact that her body balanced out. Like she yes. stayed the course. So she just kept on. And then she said one day. Just one day out of the blue, all of a sudden, she wasn't doing anything different, still keeping it keto, still eating good. And all of a sudden, it, it just came back into play. Her body started functioning, and without even trying, she started losing weight again. And I think, again, this comes down to your body has to do what it's got to do. It could take one year to do it. It might take two years to do it. For some of us, it could take longer. But oh. just... Keep being healthy, eating healthy, eating healthy. But I will admit the psychology of frustration is so powerful. And here's how it plays out. It's not just post uh, premenopausal women. It's anybody who's had a frustration with weight loss for any reason, stress, whatever. You get in your own head and you say, okay, well, nothing's happening. I might as well go to McDonald's nothing's happening. I might as well go have that favorite food I'm missing so bad right now that nothing's happening. I might as well just go ahead and have it. Nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. I, that was me. Yeah, we all play that game in our heads. Trust me, Jimmy fights it all the time. It's just yep. it's so hard. I've driven, and I'm just going to tell on myself, I've driven by a pizza joint, and I've turned in. And then I turn out and just drive away. But it's like that. Hey, there are times I've turned in and not turned out. Even though, and it wasn't pizza, but it is whatever it is. Yeah. And I think during the pandemic, there was just too many. Um, I mean, life is stressful enough in our individual lives with, you know, our circumstances individually. 
but to add the the whole climate of where are we are in our world today uh you might think you're not stressed about it but i guarantee you you are and if even if it's in the back of your mind you don't know where we are today and that is there especially if you have any you know buddy you care about you might have a mom a dad a family kids grandkids brothers sisters whoever you know and when you've got that overall anxiety about what's going to happen to us what's going to happen to us you know you put that in the mix and it becomes a, a, a recipe for disaster. Yes. And, it's and a, uh, we're just human. And it's a reminder to give ourselves and each other grace. Like I still have these assholes come on my page. You know, Why are you so bad at your keto? And I'm just like, yeah, fuck the you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Here's you keep on doing that, man. I, I've had it. I've had several. <laughs> I've had several messages, uh, comments on, particularly my YouTube. YouTube people seem to be the worst for me. Yeah. Uh, they they have no filter. Thank you, Jesus. You open the door. I I took your your again another page, and I just don't let those people get to me. You can't. You cannot. Yeah. Um, I will. I will admit, though, I have become kind of agoraphobic a little bit. Um, and I really haven't even admitted it to my husband, although he's noticed himself. Uh, from where I was to who I am today, uh, I my struggle is ongoing. I'm, I'm, but I'm fighting the good fight. But I don't feel like I don't want to be out in public. I don't want anybody in town to see me. I don't want to go to church. Uh, but this brings up another whole bag of problems because if you are so, you know, I, I don't want to be on lives. I, this is a Jimmy. If it wasn't for you, Jimmy, I would not be here. Cause I, know, I took this pause. Yeah. You have enough videos in a bit and, and I know you love me. So you're like, yeah, I want to come on with you, but mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and trust me, some days I wish I wasn't Jimmy Moore and didn't have to be online, but you know what? I'm like, screw that. I have value. I'm offering a great service to the world and I'm just going to edify you here publicly. Nancy, so do you. We've been here almost an hour and you have dropped so much knowledge. Stop devaluing who you are. I'm going to give you a little bit of a Jimmy inspirational post right here. Stop devaluing who you are and thinking that because you're not in the perfect place you want to be, that you have no value whatsoever. What you offer is real life it's what i try to offer in all my work it's why people connect with me it's why all these wonderful people are watching right now and they love you for the same reason so i tell you and i'm encouraging you today get out there more i know what you're saying that the brain is telling you i need to be more agoraphobic and i need to hide no now more than ever we need to see the real mccoy nancy childress well, I'm going to take that as um, just another confirmation. You know, um, I probably did need to take a pause. I really I felt good for it. But it seemed like once I did and I gave myself, it's, I think it's been a few weeks now. It's going on. It's only been three weeks. But the first week was weird just because I was like, I don't know what to do with myself. The second week felt kind of good, you know, like, I know I could get out there and clean my shed. I can take care of some things that I haven't been doing. And now I'm like, okay, my brain feels like it's starting to fire up with ideas and thoughts and more research and maybe getting on that computer again. And I feel like I'm like, okay, now I can, maybe I can start working at this again. That's a good sign of the creativity. And by the way, my brain never stops of ideas. I have ideas oozing out my ears I can't even get to yet. So <laughs> how I know, even though I don't look perfect, I don't give a shit. Um, because I'm providing good information and getting on wonderful people like Nancy Childress, guys. Go follow her. <laughs> she is keto for real life people has a very active page that Jimmy is a part of over on Facebook. So I think I'm still a moderator on there. I think I saw you gave you me are you yeah. are. Um, I I was just talking to Miss Sharon, one of my admins the other day. I'm like, yeah, he's got card blanche. He can he can post. You know, there was a time I had that locked down, and no, you you couldn't post unless I gave you some stuff. But I just leave it the way it is. There's certain people that I just love in the keto community. You being right up there, obviously enough. So why is he letting this puppy in here with me? I'm gonna <laughs> kill him afterwards. 
um, to just be able to post in there and share it because you have really wonderful content. I love your content. I love how you just, I mean, I'm like, that's me, man. He just said what I'm feeling. And this is day after day, you know, uh, I'm like, maybe I just needed to hear that. Like, I always say that. Like, I just I just needed to hear that. So I love having you in my group. Post anytime. Do whatever. Thank you. And, and look, I think if I can leave everyone with that message is if you have something to say and share with the world, what are you waiting on? Don't let how you look, how you feel, the narrative you're telling yourself holds you back. Um, I'm nothing special. I just I just done this a long time and consistent. Everybody could do what I do. You just need to get yourself out there. And if you like to talk on camera, do a live. If you like to write, you should be writing. If you like to just observe and, and support and watch all of you guys watching here live on Instagram or listening on my podcast, like you are the people doing what we need you to do. So we're all kind of doing the things that make us what we are and who we are. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I couldn't. Well said. Well said. Yes. Well, guys, again, go check out Nancy Childress, Keto for Real Life People. And uh, yeah, Nancy, thank you. This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. I, I just well, love you to death, Jimmy. Well you guys tried the Paleo Valley beef sticks? These beef sticks are 100% grass-fed and grass-finished. And many of the grass-fed beef sticks on the market today are actually finished with grains. They use beef sourced from small domestic farms in the United States. They only use real organic spices to flavor the beef sticks versus all the conventional spices sprayed with pesticides and other natural flavors from GMO. They also ferment the sticks, which creates naturally occurring probiotics, all great for your gut health. And best of all, they taste amazing. Again, they're Paleo Valley, my favorite beef stick on the market today. Go check them out, you guys. Paleovalley.com. Use the coupon code JIMMY at checkout for 15% off your first order. Paleo Valley Beef Sticks.